Hello, hello, good evening. How are you today? Hello, Rocio. Hello, Julio Cesar, Iris, Carlos. Hello, teacher. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, good to have you here, my dear participants. Hello, Julio. Uh, I want to congratulate you because uh, today is the last day of class. So it means that you already finished your model uh, successfully, I hope so. I want to encourage you to please go to the platform and complete all the pending if you have. And remember that I'm going to be available no matter that we finish today. I'm going to be available tomorrow and during the weekend in order that you can uh, successfully complete the platform. And uh, please remember to print your certificate and save it in PDF because that's important for your uh, curriculum, right? Um, all the INSAFOR uh, documents are very important for your professional and personal development. And also, uh, once you close the platform, uh, the um, Inglés Corporativo uh, colleagues can contact you in order to enroll you for the next uh, course. So I encourage you to complete tomorrow because if you complete by tomorrow, you will be free and enjoy uh, your weekend with no uh, pressure that you have to do this, right? So I'm going to be available and here to help you. For today, what we are going to do is uh, to go back uh, to the platform, right? So we are going to have like a fast review on what we did. We can clarify any doubt if you still have any doubt at, about the content and some specific topics. And at the end, we are going to have a review on the final exam. The idea is not only to solve the final exam here, but also that you can see the logic, uh, how uh, do we evaluate people, right? So um, I would like to show you, yes. Okay, going back in time, uh, four weeks ago when we started the course, we started with a 1.0 lesson objective. And in here, if you remember, we um, learned how to use adverbs before adjectives. And in this lesson, we learned that we can uh, write adverbs before adjectives in order to give like more emphasis to the object, adjective we are using, right? And um, we, uh, you have a video, right, in a platform. Uh, for example, very exciting. In this case, exciting is an adjective and very uh, is the adverb. So you can say also very easy, right? very interesting, uh, very late, very early, and so on. You can make a lot of combination with, um, in this case, adverbs before adjectives. Okay, so um, in this case, I don't know if it was easy. Uh, you can tell me if you think that you need like a little bit more review on this, right? Uh, for example, really nice. Really is the adjective, I mean the adverb and nice the adjective. Fairly, fairly is an adverb and big is the adjective, fairly big. Very expensive, very is the adverb and expensive the adjective. Too noisy, too is the adverb and noisy the adjective. Too crowded, too, uh, again, it's an, uh, an adverb and crowded the adjective. So um, this was um, the first topic we have. So I would like to ask if you have questions so far. Uh, ¿Recuerdan este tema, chicos? ¿Creen ustedes que, que no hay preguntas al respecto? No, en su momento lo resolvimos, ¿verdad? Okay, yes. excellent. So, uh, if you remember, uh, we elaborate a knowledge check, we complete the knowledge check. And uh, we have some questions like, do you, do you like your home, hometown? Why or why not? So you, you have to give reasons. When they ask you why, you know that they are asking for reasons. 
So the answer for this question was, not really, it's too small. So again, uh, adverb before adjective, too adverb, small adjective. And it's really boring, really adverb, boring adjective. That's why I move away. So I'm giving the reason why I don't like my, home, my hometown. What's Sydney like? Remember that when we talk about the description of a, of a person or of a thing, we ask with the question like, what's Carlos like? What's Elizabeth like? So I'm asking for a description uh, of their personality or physically, right? Uh, so I can say they are very friendly persons, they are very intelligent and so on. In this case, we're talking about a city. What is Sydney like? I've never been there. Oh, really? It's a beautiful and very clean. Uh, so, very, again, the adverb, and clean, the adjective. It has a great harbor and beautiful beaches. Number four, have you ever been to Sao Paulo? Yes, I have. It's an extremely large and crowded place, but I love it. It has excellent restaurants. So extremely is an adverb and large is an adjective. Okay, uh, in the 1.5 lesson objective, we learn about conjunctions and we um, explore different conjunctions, but we mainly uh, focus on uh, three, which are uh, and, but, though, and however, right? They were four. Um, so you have a video where you can uh, uh, go and watch it again if you need. And we learn that and and but have a purpose. So who would like to tell me? Do you remember what we used and? Para que utilizamos la conjunción and? If you remember. And es que, oh, um, adelante. Two, um, eh, digamos, dos cualidades que son continuas, mientras que el, el, el otro but es cuando hay como posición de ideas. Yes, that's true. That's correct. That's the idea that when you use and, it's because you're adding, right? You're adding information to the previous information you gave. But when you use but, is because you are comparing two different ideas, for example. Uh, so let me... Okay, so I'm asking, I'm sorry, I'm just answering to a person that is having connection problems. Okay, yes, thank you very much. And here I have some examples. Canada is very big, but the country needs more people right? So we are uh, saying in one side that it's very big, but in the other side that needs more people. Um, so the other example uh, is ta um, Taipei is very nice. Everyone is extremely friendly. So you think it's and or but? And. And, right? And because the idea continues, right? Uh, so is and. Taipei is a very nice, is very nice, and everyone is extremely friendly. The other example was the streets are crowded. It's easy to get around though, right? In this case, uh, though, uh, it's like a uh, and, and though uh, you say the streets are crowded, it's one idea, it's easy to get around though, it's another idea, right? So remember that though, according to what it says, is like, however, right? Even though, or though, it's the same. Sin embargo, ¿verdad? Eh, no importa, ¿verdad? Que it's crowded, que es muy llena la ciudad, pero es fácil. ¿verdad? Sin embargo, es fácil. Eh, caminar alrededor. Okay, the weather is nice. Summer eh, get pretty hot, however, right? Uh, shopping is great. 
You have to bargain the markets and or but. Bargain, it's like pedir rebaja, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Si es, esa es una nueva expresión para ustedes, entonces tómenla. Eh, shopping is great, una idea, but the second idea, you have to bargain in the markets. Es como like cultural, right? It's like a tradition, even though shopping is great, but you have to ask for a bargain. Eh, so let me see the other. The food is delicious and it's not too expensive, right? So in this case it's and because you are giving continuity to the idea, right? En este caso estamos dando continuidad a la idea. We are not comparing two different ideas. It's amazing, it's an amazing city. I love to get there. And, right? Because you are continuing, you continue giving more information. So I would like to ask, do you have questions about this topic? Preguntas en este tema? Teacher, doubt y however, however. Perdón, son dos. Okay. Sí, son dos. Aunque, es aunque, aunque. Okay. Pues se parecen. Lo que pasa okay. es que en el ejemplo usted podría haber utilizado however o although, ¿verdad? Eh, okay. Aunque, eh, por la forma como está escrita la oración, dice, las calles son muy eh, llenas. Eh, okay. Aunque es fácil caminar alrededor, podría haber dicho. Sin embargo, es fácil caminar alrededor. En ambos casos el meaning es que no importa que estén llenos, eh, pero puede caminar alrededor, es fácil, ¿verdad? En este caso se pueden intercambiar las, las palabras, eh, en ese caso. Eh, sí, se puede, por ejemplo aquí al fin, está, se puede, usted puede poner do normalmente al final, en cambio however usted puede haber dicho, por ejemplo, en el, el que tenemos en vista, eh, the weather is nice. However, summers get pretty hot. O pues, lo podría haber puesto al inicio, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. O lo podría dejar como está aquí. Summer get pretty hot, however. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so eh, basically we finish that and then we, we start with can and should. Do you remember eh, what is can? Or what, um, uh, what do we use can? When we use, uh, do we use can? Um, we can use can in order to express possibility or ability, right? Okay. And should is to give a suggestion or an advice. It means that I'm not, uh, pushing you to do something I'm not uh, like obeying you to do something but I'm just suggesting so it's not it's not by force but it's a just suggestion right so uh, for example let's see here if I have more they are models right so can uh, you it's not and should are not um, verb itself they are just models and they need to modify a main verb, right? Eh, recuerden que should y can son modales auxiliares, ¿verdad? Ellos no son verbos como tal, por tanto tienen que modificar a un verbo. Something that is very important that you remember is that when we use models, can, should, eh, you don't have to apply the rule of the third person singular. For example, um, this is not here, eso no aparece aquí, pero sí lo quiero decir. Yo digo, she can play the piano. Yo no digo, she can play the piano. No, I said, I say, he can play the piano. Because I'm using the model auxiliary, I don't need to use the third person singular rule. I say, uh, she should go uh, to the doctor, right? I don't say, um, she should go to the doctor. No, no, no. I say she should go to the doctor because I'm using a model auxiliary. I don't have to use the third person singular rule. Uh, does it, is it clear? 
Yes, yes. Okay, okay, that's very important because those are some typical like mistakes that we use when we uh, use the model can or should or any other, mo other model, right? So here, uh, remember also that when we, when we pronounce sh uh, should, the L doesn't sound. You say should, shouldn't. And you have to be very precise with the NT, shouldn't, in order to don't get confused people that is listening to you. It's the same with can. When you pronounce can, your mouth is like no, uh, it's like open, but you don't feel like a strength. When you say can't, you feel like a strength in your stomach, right? So you need to make sure that you pronounce properly can't, okay? Lo voy a decir en español. Eh, no me voy a meter mucho ya con los, ejer con los ejercicios porque ya ustedes no vieron, sino que les voy a dar claves adicionales, ¿verdad? Dijimos que en should la L no suena, de igual manera en shouldn't, right? Cuando vamos a hacer el negativo de can't, tenemos que asegurarnos de hacerlo bien, de pronunciarlo bien, porque si no se oye como el can afirmativo. When you pronounce can't, if you touch your stomach muscle, you will feel that you feel like a strength. Cuando usted hace el can't, usted va a sentir como una fuerza en el músculo de su estómago. Si usted lo toca y pronuncia can't, el negativo, eh, se siente, ¿verdad? Entonces eso es que usted lo está haciendo bien. Can't, right? Ok, remember that can't is a contraction that is used mostly in American English and in Canadian English. In British English or Australian English, they say cannot, and it's correct, right? So you need to be um, used to, to listen, can't or cannot, and both are okay. Okay, so I will continue because of the time I need to advance. Uh, let's see, this is the, almost the same. This is the pronunciation, what I, I have explained before. And then we go to lesson objective number two. In here, uh, we um, learn about some common health problems, right? And in addition to learn a, a common health problems, we learn some expressions, right? Uh, expressions. And the grammar uh, function that we learn here is using infinitive plus complements, right? As just uh, in addition to should, uh, they help us to give advice, right? But can someone tell me, do you remember how to ask? Uh, how do you feel? ¿Se recuerdan cómo podíamos pronunciar eh, o decir cómo nos sentimos y cómo podíamos expresar eh, que algo andaba mal? Mm, I have a headache. Yes, I have a headache. I have a backache. I have, I have a heartache. I, I got the flu. Yes, excellent. Uh, uh, but the question is, how do you feel today? And the possible answer, I'm not so well. I'm not feeling well. I feel sick, right? Uh, or as you said before, I have a headache. I have a backache. I got the flu. I have an earache and etc. right? Uh, so uh, remember that when we suggest, we say you should, you should see a doctor, right? You should uh, go to the doctor, right? That's a suggestion. But also when we ask for advice, we say, what should I do for a cold? What should I do for a headache? What should I do for a fever? or what should I do for the flu? So you can answer, it's a good idea to, to take some vitamin C. It's a good idea to take some aspirin. It's a good idea to take some acetaminophen. It's a good idea to take some uh, pain pills, right? Uh, it's a good idea to take some, um, I don't know, 
any other uh, medicine that you can mention. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, we learn about um, some medicine vocabulary. And we said that the syrup is the liquid that we use for cough. We have some peels, right? Uh, we have some uh, ointments, right? Uh, that you apply in your skin for some diseases. Uh, we have some vitamins, of course. And uh, we learn some other vocabulary about uh, doctors and hospitals, right? But in this case, what we learn is to say, to take. Or you can say, it's a good idea to uh, drink lots of water, to drink, infinitivo. It's a good idea to take a rest. It's a good idea uh, uh, to have a chicken soup, for example, if you have the flu. Okay. Um, here we have some other examples. What should I do for a sore throat? It's important to take some vitamin C. What should I do for a fever? It's a good idea to drink lots of liquids. What should I do for a, for a burn? It's sometimes helpful, some ointment on it. What should I do for a toothache? It's important to see or to go a dentist. What should I do for a cough? It's a good idea to get some medicine or to take some medicine, right? And here, uh, if you remember, we uh, made the difference between take and drink, right? Because drink is to drink water and to drink any liquid. But to take is the action to take the pill and to put it in your mouth to swallow, right? So you say to take an aspirin, to take um, an acetaminophen uh, pill, right? Uh, and so on. And you drink water, drink tea, right? In the 2.7 lesson objective, we learn a, a, with a conversation between the pharmacist and the customer, right? Um, what do you suggest? Uh, when you ask, what do you suggest? The other person can answer, you should. You should do this and this and that. Or it's recommendable to do this and that, right? Uh, later, we continue learning about modals, can. We said that can is used to say abilities or uh, to talk about a uh, possibility. Could is like the past tense of can, even though we know that they are models and that they cannot be conjugated as a verb, they have like a past. And in this case, could is the past of can. So can, puede, puedo, could, podría, o podía, right? And may, that is uh, for permission or request, right? Puedo uh, y might, que no aparece aquí, sería el podría, ¿verdad? El, como el pasado de may. Okay. Um, in this case, you have some examples. Um, may I help you, right? May I help you is more polite than can I help you. You can use both. Usted puede utilizar los dos, ¿verdad? Pero may es como más diplomático, es más formal. May I help you? Um, can I have something for itchy eyes? Pero suena un poco más, eh, menos diplomático, ¿verdad? Que si yo digo, could I have something for itchy eyes? Or may I have something for itchy eyes? Sure, I suggest, I suggest a bottle of eye drops, right? Or you can say, you should buy or you should have or you should get a bottle of eye drops. What do you have or suggest for some muscles? You should try this ointment. It's excellent. Can I have a box of bandages, please? Or could I have a box of bandages, please? Or may I have a box of bandages, please? And what do you have or what do you suggest for insomnia? Try 
of some of these herbal tea. It's very relaxing. Try is it when, like when you're going to taste some food or some uh, drink, the word we use is try, probar, ¿verdad? Pero no probar como test, sino probar de que usted lo va a saborear, lo va a degustar. Entonces eso es try. Okay, the 2.12 uh, was a listening and, and reading for a specific information skill. In this case, uh, you have to listen. It was not reading, it was to listen. So basically in this exercise, you have to use your audio, you have to download the audio and uh, again, try this, right? Um, I won't stop too much here because I need to advance. And in the number three lesson objective, we'll learn to use words like so, to, neither, uh, we say that it's either or either, depending if you are in American or British English, right? Um, they mean uh, such as, let's see. The uh, words such as so, entonces, to, también, uh, and either or either, uh, que serían tampoco, ¿verdad? Okay. Going out for dinner, so to neither or either or either. If you remember, we use uh, so and to when we agree with affirmative or negative ideas. ¿Se recuerdan? ¿Para qué utilizábamos el so y el to? Para reafirmar. Uh, yes, para reafirmar, for, for, for example, if you said, I like fish, you said, so do I, so do I, so do I. a mí también, ¿verdad? O podía decir, I like it too, a mí me gusta también. Entonces yo estaba afirmando sobre una affirmative sentence, I like chocolate, and then you say, so do I, me too, do you remember? So, so and to were to give uh, affirmations regarding two affirmative um, expressions, but neither or either. What do you think? Would you like to go out for dinner tonight? And you say, no, no, I prefer, I, I, I don't want to go. Entonces you say, me, me neither. Yo tampoco. Uh, so, neither on or either or either was uh, to give a uh, like a support but for a negative idea right entonces neither or either or either también nos servía para reafirmar pero una una situación negativa verdad o una expresión negativa okay um let's see Yes, también y tampoco, ¿verdad? It's the same. You have two videos. So, to, uh, neither or either. For example, I am not crazy about French food. Neither am I or I'm not either. Vea que dice neither am I. La estructura cambia un poquito. Or I'm not either. ¿verdad? Vea que es una, una expresión negativa. I'm not crazy about French food. This is a negative. Look, this affirmative. I can eat any kind of food. So can I, or I can too. In this case, you have to be very careful to use the same uh, auxiliar or the same verb, right? In this case, in the second, I can, so I can, or so can I, I can too. In la primera era, I am not, neither I. Neither am I, or I'm not either. Okay, I think Mexican food is delicious. So do I, or I do too, right? Um, in this case, you, you don't have to use exactly I think, even though you can say I, I think so. That was another expression to say the same. I can stand greasy food. 
So it's a negative expression. So the, the answer, the support expression is neither can I or I can't either. I don't like salty food. Again, a negative. And in this negative, we are using the auxiliary do, right? In this case, don't. Neither do I or I don't either. I'm in the mood of, so, of something spicy. That's an affirmative. So I can say, so am I. I am too. I'm crazy about Korean food. Uh, support um, expression, so am I or I am too. So I'm respecting the verb to be I'm. I don't enjoy fast food very much. Neither do I or I don't either. It's a negative. And so that was the dynamic of this exercise. And later we went to the 3.5 lesson objective. And in this case, we, uh, you practice uh, how to respond, uh, be sound, uh, more, sounding more, more natural, pronouncing neither or either or either, right? So uh, 3.7 was about um, using would and will for request. Basically, we use this for ordering a meal. When you're ordering a meal, you use will. I will have a salad, I will have a sandwich, I will have a, I don't know, a soup, depending on what you want to order. But when you want to be polite, you say would, yes? What would you like to order? I'll have the fried chicken. Would you like rice or potatoes? I would like potatoes, please. What kind of potatoes would you like? Remember that here we learn uh, would uh, or would you like? Se recuerda? Would or would you like? Recuerda que decíamos I would like cuando lo que seguía era un noun, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo acá, I would like potatoes. ¿Sí? Eh, aprendimos yeah. también que no llevaba like cuando lo que seguía eh, era un verbo. Por ejemplo, I would prefer, I would prefer eh, mashed eh, potatoes, for example. Eso lo vimos en la parte de la clase. ¿verdad? What kind of potatoes would you like? Mashed, baked, or french fry, fries? Aquí dice fries, pero es fries. Ok, aquí hay un errorcito, me disculpo por eso, porque es eh, fries, como las papas fritas, ¿verdad? Eh, I'd like mashed potatoes. What, eh, the waiter says, would that be all for now? And that's it, right? So, the 3.12 in this uh, lesson objective, we, um, that was a, a reading. Uh, for develop the learning, uh, for uh, listening how to uh, it, it identify some details in the conversation, right? So the skill is for listening for details. In this case, you have to download the audio or expand the window and listen. And here, basically, was people in a cafeteria looking for some food and um, you listen Hannah's order, for example. Uh, Rex's order was coffee with cream and sugar and a piece of pie apple. So I recommend you that you can go back if you want and listen because this is a listening exercise, right? Later we went to the midterm exam. This is the midterm exam that we already solved it, so I won't stop here. And then we went to for a um, part lesson objective. In this case, we learn about geography, all the vocabulary about the, the geography. And later we move to comparison adjectives, right? So can somebody tell me what do we do when we need to compare an adjective? ¿Qué utilizamos cuando queremos eh, comparar un adjetivo? ¿Qué le Yes, Dan. ¿Qué le agregamos al adjetivo? ¿Qué le agregamos al adjetivo? 
Superlativo. E, ¿verdad? Para el, ER, sorry. para el grado de comparación es Dan y el ER. Por ejemplo, taller than. My brother is taller than me. Es más alto que yo, ¿verdad? Y el al tall, que es el adjetivo, yo le agrego er. Y luego vimos el superlative, ¿verdad? En el superlative vimos que there's no comparison. No hay comparación. Y entonces en lugar de dan, utilizamos da. Y yo digo, my brother is the tallest. Mi hermano es el más alto. Y en lugar de er, le agrego est, right? Tallest. So that was um, the comparison in the superlative degree. So which is larger? In this video, you learn about the comparison, right? Uh, larger than, for example, here, uh, which country is smaller, Monaco or Vatican City? Uh, we can say in the answer, um, maybe, Vatican City is smaller than Monaco, right? Which waterfall is higher, Niagara Falls or uh, Angel Falls? Maybe we can say Niagara Falls are higher than uh, Angel Falls, right? Okay, which city is more crowded? Aprendimos que también con los... Um, Adjectives that are like more than uh, two syllables or like, like three syllables, excuse me, uh, you use the word more, right? For example, more crowded. Which city is more uh, crowded? Hong Kong or Cairo? Or Cairo? Maybe you can say Cairo, I mean Hong Kong, is more crowded than Cairo. Uh, which lake is larger, the Caspian uh, Sea or Lake Superior. So that was the idea of this, of this uh, exercise, that we use uh, ER or more, right? More famous um, and more crowded, for example. So um, in this case, um, from num number six, yes. Famous, the highest. From number six, the number six in adelante, ya estamos utilizando el superlativo, ¿verdad? The highest, the longest, right? No comparison. Aquí ya hay alguien que es superior, ¿verdad? Que el otro. Eh, the longest, the most expensive. En lugar de utilizar more, en el comparativo utilizamos more, pero aquí ya no utilizamos more, sino the most, the most expensive, el más caro. No hay otro que sea más caro que ese, ¿verdad? So, the most expensive. Which city is the most expensive? Tokyo, Moscú, or Hong Kong? You can say, Tokyo is the most expensive city. What is the ocean in the world? Um, what is the deepest ocean in the world? Eh, aquí aparentemente los estamos comparando, ¿verdad? Pero en realidad, eh, lo que estamos diciendo es que hay uno que es the deepest, el más profundo, the driest, el más seco. Okay, there, there is no comparison with other. So, um, later in the 4.7, we learn how to sound natural when asking questions of choice. Do you remember the questions of choice? Mm -hmm. Okay. The distance and measurements. Uh, how mm -hmm. long? Mm -hmm. How far? Do you remember? Yes, teacher. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have questions so far? Tenemos preguntas hasta aquí. Si hay algo de los temas que quedó así un poquito en nebuloso o que lo podamos ver ahorita. No, teacher. Todo bien, ok, seguimos entonces ya para, para ir entrando a lo que sería el examen final. Ok, eh, remember that how, eh, it's a WH word that expresses eh, the, the, the manner, right? So, 
how, how, how high es qué tan alto, right? How big, qué tan grande. How long, qué tan largo. And how hot, qué tan caliente, ¿verdad? Ok, eso es la manera. Entonces, you can eh, use how eh, with all those eh, adjectives to find a new expression. Ok, in the, in the, in the 5.0, we learn about eh, future with present continuous and be going to. And in this case, we learn about making plans, right? And we uh, find the difference between the simple present and the present continuous by saying that a simple present is to talk about habits and routines, right? And we use words like every day, normally, usually, but in the present continuous, we talk about uh, situations or activities that are happening right now as we speak. And we use the word now. For example, we are solving or we are finishing our intermediate model, pre-intermediate model three right now. We are reviewing the pre-intermediate model with students uh, now. Students are uh, taking their exam, their final exam now. Teacher is closing the class now as we speak, right? Or you can use right now or now, right? But uh, be going to is an expression uh, to talk about future, a short time future, right? And we learned that it's a little bit different from will because be going to means that we have some plans. And since we have some plans and it's in the short uh, time, they are going to be accomplished, right? And in this case, they are certainly, um, or they, they have more probabilities to be accomplished, right, than plans that we have for long term. Uh, for example, uh, what, are you, what are you doing uh, tonight? Would you like to go out? Uh, are you doing anything on Friday night? Do you want to see a movie? Uh, in, the other, in the other case, we are having friends over for a barbecue on Sunday. Would you and your parents like to come? If you see, they are very short periods of time. Si bien es cierto, estamos hablando de futuro, pero estamos hablando de un futuro corto, ¿verdad? Planificado, que, que probablemente sí se va a cumplir, ¿verdad? Más que cuando utilizamos el will, que eh, sí es un futuro y básicamente estaríamos diciendo lo mismo, pero a veces el will es como más un deseo, ¿verdad? De querer hacer las cosas. And it may take longer. Y nos puede tomar más tiempo. Uh, next one. Are you staying in town next weekend? Eh, en este caso, vea que si bien es cierto, estamos utilizando el ING, ¿verdad? Eh, pero estamos determinando un periodo más futuro. En este caso, necesariamente tenemos que utilizar palabras como next week, um, tomorrow, or whatever. But normally, ing form is for things that are happening right now. And we use be going to for future. Uh, I'm going to be here on Saturday, but not Sunday. Let's try and go on Saturday. My father is going to visit my brother at college, but my mother and I are going to be home. Sorry, I can't. Um, sorry, I can't. I am going to work overtime tonight. How about tomorrow night? Can we go to a late show? I'm going to stay at the office until 7. 5.5. In this case, it uh, was a previous class where we talk about uh, being polite, right? When we're talking uh, on the phone, right? And how to uh, follow some rules when we take a message. So uh, that's what we did. And we learned the difference of tell and ask and other verbs, right? But basically in the platform, we learned that tell is when you're giving a message, paraphrase someone else. You transmit the idea of what other person said, even though this is not literally. Es como, dígale, ¿verdad? 
dígale qué, tal cosa. En ask es para pedir o para preguntar. Por ejemplo, here. Could you tell Joel the movie is at seven? Es como, dígale, transmítale el mensaje a Joel que la, que la película va a ser a las siete. Could you tell Joel that the movie is at, it's at seven? Eh, would you ask Mitch to pick me up at home around four? Right? I don't know exactly how you're going to say to Mitch, but I'm asking if you, I'm requesting if you can ask him, right? Ask, pedir, solicitar. Please tell Eva the concert on Saturday is canceled, right? So I'm sending a message to Eva. Please tell Eva the concert on Saturday is canceled. Remember that you can always answer with um, a dot or without a dot. Puede contestar con un punto o sin un punto en la plataforma. Solo asegúrese de utilizar adecuadamente eh, los símbolos, ¿verdad? Si usted le pone doble punto, por ejemplo, le va a dar error. Ok, would you, would you ask Jim to bring the tickets uh, for the hockey game tonight? And the final, uh, would you tell Anne the museum opens at 10 tomorrow morning? So I'm sending a message, right, for Anne. Okay, and finally, uh, this is uh, summarizing. So that's we did last night, the cell phone etiquette. So since we already did it, I will pass to the final exam, right? The final exam uh, is about, uh, the first part is a listening, right? It's a listening exercise. So you necessarily need to go and download the audio and listen again and again until you get the right um, information, right? But it's basically uh, about West Invitation. So what is West Invitation about? It's about a beach party, right? So be careful, it's different beach party from birthday party. Um, but West gives an excuse. And what he says is that he starts work at seven, at 6 p.m. So uh, it's impossible for him to go. Rita. Uh, Rita uh, dance, uh, it's a dance performance, right? So that's the best uh, answer for that um, question. And Rita uh, needs to study for a test, right? So that's the excuse, Rita excuse. So remember that you have to go and listen in order that you can find uh, the context of these answers. For the letter B, basically you have to put the words in the correct order to make a sentence, right? So what do you plan to do tonight? Easy, that's no difficult. Uh, I want to stay home. There's a soccer match on TV. What are you and they go or going? In this case, going to do, going to do tomorrow. Uh, we like have a barbecue on the beach, but it may rain. Remember that uh, I would, in this case, I would like to have or would like to have. Remember that este would like, que está acá, ¿verdad? Se abrevia así apóstrofe D y like, ¿verdad? Entonces el would es, eh, so, se puede convertir solamente el apóstrofe y la letra D, ¿verdad? I y sería I, we o I. Este se utiliza para we y para I. I'd like to have o we'd like to have o completo, ¿verdad? We would like to have, I would like to have. What do you hope to do? After graduation, love traveling in Europe for a while. Lo mismo, ¿verdad? I'd love to travel or I would love to travel. Letter C, circle the correct word, world. I mean word, excuse me, in this case. Um, there are lots of beautiful trees in this. Sea, forest or waterfall. In this case, it's a little bit of geography vocabulary, right? So if I'm talking about trees, 
is the forest. It's not the sea, it's not the waterfall. Uh, again, desert and desert, right? Uh, desert is the place that is very hot and dry. The desert is the postre, right? For the coffee. So be careful because uh, it's only the pronunciation that, the, that changes. Desert and desert. So desert is a very hot and dry place. It's always higher than a valley, higher. If you see here, we are talking about the uh, comparison, right? So a mountain is always higher than a valley. So we are talking, a, not, we are not talking about a lake. We are not comparing a river. Next, uh, choose the, the short phrase, right? Uh, please, Mary, there's a school party on Sunday. Tell, please tell, not to tell. Please tell Mary there's a school party on Sunday. Would you ask Bill? Cuando utilizamos ask, ahí sí, agregamos el to, to bring. Would you ask Bill to bring the concert tickets tonight? Could you ask Dana that the movie starts at 8.15, right? Or tell, in este caso, eh, sería tell, mm -hmm. ¿verdad? Eh, para mí es más tell, pero fíjense que eh, eh, yo lo tomaría como tell, could you tell Dana that the movie starts at 8.15? Eh, pero sean cuidadosos con el sistema porque cuando yo puse tell me dio error. Entonces quise traérselos para que lo vean, ¿verdad? Porque a veces hay errorcillos en el sistema que ocurre, ¿sí? Ok. Ok, para que sean cuidadosos porque lo más lógico es tell, ¿verdad? Podría decirle a Dana que la película comienza a las 8.15, pero eh, a mí me dio error, entonces se los traje así para que lo revisen con cuidado. And the last, I think it's the last, no, <laughs> it's missing F. Complete the sentences. In this case, uh, we are asking using would and uh, will, right? So what would you like to eat? The fried chicken, please. In this case, when you offer, we use would. What kind of potatoes would you like? When I answer, I say I'll. Es como que yo dijera I will have. Pero lo, lo contracto y digo I'll. I'll have the mushed potatoes. Anything to drink? Yes, please. I'd, I would. Vea que las dos, la dos contracciones, I'll es I will. Y I'd es I would. De nuevo, este would se vuelve apóstrofe D. I'd like some water. Normalmente cuando escribimos lo correcto es escribirlo completo, ¿verdad? I would like. Pero cuando hablamos, normalmente la gente no dice I would like. They, they say I'd like. So you need to uh, train your ear in order to, to know that when I say uh, I'd, I'm saying I would like some water in that case. Anything else? No. That would be all. Ese would be es como, eso sería todo. Would be all. Recuerden que el would, cuando va antes de un verbo, eh, le agrega el ría. ¿Ya? Yeah? I would like, me gustaría. That would be, eso sería. I would go. Eh, iría, ¿verdad? So, eh, would, before a verb, adds the ría, meaning. Okay, uh, in the next, we are going to complete each sentence with the correct form of the adjective, right? Uh, which city is more crowded? In this case, you need to add more because the word is uh, more than uh, three, more than two, excuse me, uh, syllables. Is Disney World amusement park in the world? So we are talking about the adjective famous. So famous 
it's a big, it's a big word, so we have to use the must. In this case, we are talking about a, a superlative, right? We are not talking about the comparative, but the superlative, the most famous. What is the longest river in the world? The Amazon, the Nube, or Nile? So, since the adjective is long, we are comparing uh, the other, we say the superlative is the longest. Es, eh, vean que esto puede ser un poco tricky porque aparentemente estamos comparando, ¿verdad? La Amazona con el Danubio y el Nilo. Pero en realidad eh, lo que estamos preguntando es en grado superlativo. ¿Cuál es el más, el más, gran, el más largo de todos, verdad? Entonces aquí estamos... En el mundo. En el, el más mundo. grande del mundo. Exacto. Entonces, aunque aparentemente usted dice, no, teacher, pero si es que está comparando, no. Le está preguntando cuál de los tres es el más, the longest, el más grande. La respuesta es denial, ¿verdad? Denial eh, es el más largo, aunque es menos caudaloso, pero hasta donde tengo entendido es el más largo del mundo. Eh, let's see. Entonces, eso puede ser un poco tricky. Permítanme que ya me regresé. Ahí está. Y complete the request. Uh, so in this case, um, you need to um, complete the request using the name in parentheses. The test uh, on Saturday is at 1 p.m. Please tell, please tell, entonces, ¿cómo sería? Please tell Ken the test is on, is on Thursday. Uh, the test on Thursday is at 1 p.m. Or can that. ¿Se recuerdan que estuvimos viendo que cuando utilizamos el tell para dejar mensajes o recados, utilizamos a veces that, right? So, can that, the test is on Saturday, the test on Saturday is at 1 p.m. Pero también lo puede hacer sin that, ¿verdad? Can, eh, please tell, can, The test on, Saturday, on Thursday is at 1 p.m. Or can that, the test on, Saturday, on Thursday, is at 1 p.m. Okay, meet me after class today. Would you ask, ¿cuál sería la otra manera de, de decirlo? Would you ask Alex to meet me after class today? Uh, there is a volleyball game tonight. Okay, that's the message. So, could you tell Marcus there's a volleyball game tonight? Or could you tell Marcus that there's a volleyball game tonight? Come to the picnic on Saturday. That's the message, right? So, you have to say, please ask Paula to come to the picnic on Saturday. And finally, you have to read this article about the big island. Island, la S no suena. Y la A es I, island. Okay, um, everyone knows that Hawaii is a beautiful group of islands. Igual que island, islands tampoco eh, suena. Ya casi terminamos, chicos. Um, let's see. Eh, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But did you know that the Hawaii is both the name of the state and the name of the biggest island in the state? The biggest, a superlative. Yes, it's confusing. So most people call the island of Hawaii the big island. The weather on the big island is very interesting. It has 10 of the 15 kinds of the desert, mountain, and alpine. Sometimes it even gets snow, gets snow on top of its two highest volcanoes. On the west side of the island, the weather is sunny, Kailua Kona is almost perfect. It, get, it gets up to about 80 uh, Fahrenheit in the winter and 87 Fahrenheit in the summer. It only goes down to 64 Fahrenheit in the winter and 69 Fahrenheit in the summer. The koala area in the north is the driest part, driest, look, a superlative, is the driest part of the island with only about 10 inches of rain a year. 
On the east side, Ilo gets around 140 inches of rain per year. It's the wettest, wettest superlative city in the United States. All that rain makes for some amazing waterfall near Ilo. Water temperatures are coldest, superlative, coldest in February and warmest, warmest, superlative in September and October. There's a good uh, snorkeling, great scuba diving and wonderful things year around. That makes the big island popular with people from all over the world any time of the year. So what is Hawaii? A state and an island, right? Uh, what's the climate not found in Hawaii? Arctic, right? There's no uh, like snow, even though they say that some volcanoes have some, but uh, it's not the Arctic uh, climate. How, how does it get in, Ka in Ka Kailua, Kona, in the winter? 80 uh, Fahrenheit. Where does it rain the most? In the east. And that's it. We're finished. What do you think about the exam? ¿Qué piensan del exam? It's very easy. It's easy. <laughs> it's not scary. Uh, the idea of solving the exam here was uh, in order that you can see the tricks, right? And what exactly we are we evaluating and what we should learn from the from those exams, right? So it's not difficult, it's very easy. So I, I encourage you to please go and finish if it's possible tomorrow. Remember that if you have questions, I'm here to help you, right? Or you can write to the WhatsApp group if you prefer. Thank questions you. so far? Pregunta, chicos? Okay. Um, sure. Adelante. Adelante, adelante. No sé quién estaba. Ingrid, como que eso, ¿no? Era Ingrid o era Noria, no sé. I say, no okay. teacher, and the question. Okay. It's all clear. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for all. Uh, it has been a pleasure to work with you. Uh, let me encourage you to continue because you have a very good English level. You have a um, very good understanding of everything in English. So it means that you have a good listening. Also, you have a good speaking practice. So I encourage you to continue that way. And I encourage you to continue in the next module, right? And, and so uh, please complete all the paperwork in order that you can be able to start the, in the next module as soon as possible. So my colleagues from Inglés Corporativo, are going to contact you in order to give you more information. But remember that the key is to finish the platform, right? right. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. And I hope it's you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Okay, Be safe. Thank Good you, night. teacher. Bye. Good night. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, too. Bye-bye.